me a favor. Would you stand with me as we read God's word? This is what it says. It says, so we have been greatly encouraged in the midst of our troubles and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, because you have remained strong in your faith. It gives us new life to know that you are standing firm in the Lord. How we thank God for you. Because of you, we have great joy as we enter God's presence. I just want to say this. You have no idea how God might use you. One word of encouragement, one act of service, one gift of generosity to change someone's life. It's because of you. So, Father, I thank you for these moments that we have today. As we celebrate your goodness and who you are in us, Father God, it's because of your people, Lord, that we're able to do what we do. And so, Father, I pray today that you would just speak to our hearts that we can truly be thankful. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, you may be seated. Well, here's what we're going to do today over just the next few moments. I've been excited about this service. We, we do this, obviously, in the season of thanks, but I really pray that every day, every, every moment is a moment of thanks and a season of thanks. Uh, you know, we used to say it all the time, you know, you got to have an attitude of gratitude, <laughs> right? You know, and so I almost got preachy there. I don't know. It was like someone get a white hanky. I don't know. But, but the truth is, is that we, gotta, we are truly thankful for what we have. We're truly thankful. So today what I want to do is I'm thankful for you. It's because of you. And because of your involvement in this church and in this community, it's because of you, of how you serve and, and uh, where you step up, how you volunteer, all of those things, we're able to do what we do because of you. That's a wrap right there. I can wrap that. I know you really don't want me to. But so here's what we do. So I just want to start, you know, what we believe as a church, what we believe in who we are, where our heart, our, our mission is to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. That's our goal. That's our mission. That's what we want to happen. That's why we exist as a church, to see people become fully devoted followers of Christ. And so we want to, man, that's just kind of how we, um, it's like the, the gauge that we measure things by. If we're going to take on ministries or, or we're going to do small groups or, or we're going to have a youth ministry. And so I know I was a youth pastor for many years, and I know, Brent, you probably experienced this too. People just thought that we were just there to have games and fun with students. In fact, I remember one time I had a family. They came in and met with my boss, the senior pastor, and says, all Smarty does is play games in there. And I looked at the records. That kid showed up three times in four years, and it was game night every night. I don't know what it was. Maybe that's why he came. <laughs> but there's a reason why, and it's just, again, is to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. And so we play games in, in youth, or the kids will watch video, or they'll play games because it opens people up. And all of a sudden, then when you start having conversation, and you talk about the Word of God, uh, man, some barriers have been broken down. And you start seeing life change happen, and people become fully devoted followers of Christ. And so again, to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ, whose mission is this? It's ours. It's our mission. It's not my mission. It's not uh, whoever's leading our kids' mission. It's ours, the church. It's our mission. And that's what makes you important. You're important. You're, part of the, you're a part of the solution. And everything that we do, could you imagine? I just, I, th I get tired sometimes thinking because there are times. I remember one time I was on staff at a church in Belen, New Mexico. Anybody know where Belen is? All right. I didn't think so. All right. <laughs> but I'll never forget, I had to speak on a Wednesday night. And I was a youth pastor. And I had to speak to the adults on a Wednesday night. We had Wednesday night church service. And those were the days where you had Sunday school. Anybody remember Sunday school? All right. We had morning worship service. Then we had Sunday night church. And then we had Wednesday night church. And then at the church I was at, we had Tuesday night youth. And then whatever else we could fill in the time that the church doors were open, we were there. But I'll never forget, it was a Wednesday night. The pastor was out of town. I had to speak. So what I had to do is I had to lead worship. Yeah, I did. I led worship. I know. It's hard to believe. I know. And so lead worship, run sound, turn on the recording, preach the message, give the altar call, and shut everything down. And I just, I'm like, this isn't a one-man show. It takes all of us. 
We're all part of that. We're all part of what God's called us to, to, to be. I love what it says in the book of Acts chapter 2. It says in verse 42, and this might be a little long, but I want you to listen to the early church. And this was the early church, and this represents us. This is who we are, and this is who we're to become. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, day and, and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together, and they had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone who had, who had, that had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily of those who were being saved. I thought that was interesting. You know what? They didn't go to church. They were the church, right? And that's who we are. We don't go to church. We are the church. You'll hear me say that time and time again, that we, the people, are the church. It's not just the four walls that you're sitting in. It's when we walk out into the community, when we walk amongst our families and we go into our jobs and we're with our friends. We're the church, and we're to do what God's called us to do. We can't do this without you. And so we have a vision for a church where everyone loves the church. Where everyone loves the church. How cool is that, right? I love what Ephesians said, and this was just the address. And I know it talks about uh, you know, family relationships, but this is what it says in Ephesians chapter 5. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. After all, no one ever hated his own body, uh, but he fills and cares for it just as Christ does the church. We are members of his body. Christ's heart beats for the church, for us, not for the building. It'd be kind of odd, right? Man, I love that building. <laughs> People not so much, but the building, you know? No, we're about, we are his church, and his heart beats for us. And I just want you to know, I want to love what Jesus loves, right? I want to love what Jesus loves. And so we want to be incredibly passionate and not just be cultural Christians, you know what I mean by that? I mean, in this world that we're in, man, the culture is just so almost anti, anti-Christian, anti right? And so I know Brent said this last week, you know, we can talk about God all day long, but the second we start talking about Jesus, things get, people start having problems. And I know the Bible says no other name but the name of Jesus. No other name brings salvation and so we want to be passionate. And so we want to live for God. We want to be 100% completely sold out to God's Son and living in a way that would bring glory to Him. Think about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, uh, you know, if you know any of his story, and obviously we talk about it many times, you know, Paul wrote a good portion of the, of the New Testament. And his story is told over and over again. And we all have a story. We all have ways that God has used us or maybe some experiences in our life that we are able to share with other people about, what, man, you know what God did for me? Man, you're walking through a difficult time. Let me tell you when I walked through this difficult time. And so Paul tells his story. Paul's like, man, by the way, guys, I just want you to know that I used to kill Christians. How would you like to open up that story in the middle of a church full of Christian people? I killed Christians. <laughs> you know, we'll kill you, especially in Texas. But I know. But it was just, you know, it's just crazy. He would tell his story. He goes, but you know what? I had an encounter with the risen Lord, and he saved me. All of a sudden, I realized, man, I'm fighting against the one that I need to be serving. And he had an encounter with Jesus that was life-transforming, and he could not contain it. And he said, man, I've got to make this happen. And, he, and so he's talking to the people in Thessalonica. I say that three times. We open up with that verse. And the reason was it was a great city. It was a harbor city. It was a very famous harbor. And so a lot of, of, of spices and a lot of trade would come in and out of that harbor at Thessalonica. And so I'm just saying that so I can like, you know, articulate Thessalonica. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm going to be in trouble. Suzanne's going to get on to me in a minute. And so... 
But the truth is, is one of the strategic spots for the gospel. If he knew that he could reach the people there, then he could take the gospel all over the world. Because, man, if I could just get into this strategic place, if I could just get here. But he didn't do it alone. He had a team around him. I love what it says. Acts chapter 17, it says, As Paul's custom, he went to the synagogue services, and for three Sabbaths in a row, three Sabbaths in a row he used the Scripture to reason with the people. He explained the prophecies and proved that the Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead. He said, this Jesus I am telling you about is the Messiah. He was passionate and he went three times. He went to three different Sabbaths and he would talk about it and tell them just the good news of Jesus. And he's in this critical place to be able to reach out and minister the gospel. Three different missionary journeys and on the other side of this mission trips, there was a sense of awe of what God had done. And again, it was just where God used him to be able to reach so many people. And he put so many people on his path that were able to make it happen. It was because of those that were around him. People were transformed by Christ. They were different. And so, and again, you talk about what he has done for us. He goes, we have been greatly encouraged in the midst of our troubles and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, because you have remained strong in your faith. And so I'm saying that to you, we're able to do what we do because of you, because you remain strong in your faith, because you are committed to seeing incredible things happen for the kingdom of God. We're in such a crazy world right now, and I know all the news and all the things, and I know we seem to mention it sometimes a little more than I like. But conversations that I have, and sometimes sitting around the coffee table, and things just come up of where people are hurting and going through difficult times, and I just scream it on the inside, we have the answer. We have the answer, and it's in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so I think about this because you have remained strong in your faith. We've been encouraged in the midst of our troubles and suffering. Isn't it amazing how when we're hurting, someone else remains strong in their faith and how their faith can actually minister in a crazy time? Sometimes we're going through a difficult time, and that's why I was wanted to show that video. You know, it's like, man, God, man, I'm so thankful for what you have done. I'm thankful for the people that you placed in my path. <laughs> I'm thankful that even when I am weak, that you are strong and you put other people in my path that will encourage because they remain strong in their faith. And let that be our prayer. And so we're so blessed that you remain strong. And so that's it's because of you we have great joy. I think about this. He said, because of you we have great joy as we enter God's presence. So I think about that for a moment. You know, I think about that. What it would it be like if people around the world and look at you and say, because of you, we have great joy because of you and what you brought us, because of you and your faithfulness to what God has called you to do. We have great joy. How cool would it be to get up into heaven and people will come in and they're just like, man, Rick, because of you, I'm here. Because of you, I have great joy. How cool would that be, Lori, if somebody came in and said, because of you, because of you, I'm here. How cool, how amazing would that be, right? Right? That's what we're called to be. We're called to be that, what Christ has called us, because you have no idea how God might use you. One word of encouragement, one act of service, one gift of generosity to change somebody's life. It's because of you, right? Say, because of me, ready? Right? Because of me. And, so, and then look at the person next to you and say, because of you. Got to wake you guys up. We're going to be a little interactive. <laughs> And so, again, that's what we're saying. It's because of what God's called us to do, because of you. And so I love the church. God is working through you as a church beyond a shadow of a doubt. He's unquestionably transforming lives. And it's because of your faithfulness. Sometimes we don't always see those things. Sometimes we don't always see, well, man, God, I mean, I've been talking to this person or, or maybe some things in your own life. I really don't see the change. And then somewhere this transformation begins to happen. It's because of God's faithfulness. God is changing lives. Think about this. Peter, people, yeah, Peter mattered to God too, but people matter to God, therefore they should matter to me, right? That's like our saying. People matter to God, therefore they should matter to me. You matter to God, therefore you should matter to me. And so whoever we come in contact with, that's what we're called to do. 
And so that's what we're called to do. So God is changing lives. Number two, everyone serves as the church. We serve together as the church. I love what Corinthians says. It says, the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And though, it's, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Can you guys you kind of follow the theme here? Right, many parts. I didn't put all that up there. I know Lily's back there going, I can't find that scripture because there was so there's so many parts. <laughs> I didn't want to take up so many screens because there are so many parts. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Right? I mean, how would that be if we were all an elbow? <laughs> right? <laughs> we wouldn't get very far. Right? How would that be, right? I mean, how would it be if we were all an eye and we couldn't hear anything? What if we were all an ear? We'd walk into walls. I'm just saying, it's like we don't, we all serve in different capacities. We have different gifts. We have different talents. Man, I love what Suzanne is doing with our worship team and and watching Eden play the guitar this morning. How cool was that? That this 14-year-old girl says, I want to use my gifts for the glory of God. That's what we're called to do. We're called to use our gifts and talents. As you walk around this place, you'll see different areas. Uh, Boy, I certainly can't do some things. (laughs) I mean, you walk upstairs by our youth room, and there's some really cool murals out there. If I would have painted that, they would have been maybe resemble stick figures. (laughs) Maybe. You might be able to recognize the smiley face. I don't know. But because of you, we're able to do what we do. I love what 2 Corinthians says in chapter 9, verse 11. It says, you will be made rich in every way so that, so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks. To God, that's what the scripture says. Because of you, we're able to do what we do. We're thankful. I just challenge you as you go through this week to be thankful. There's so many things that we can be frustrated with. There's so many things that we can be down on. There's so many things that we can be critical of. Nobody's ever critical. I know. I know. I'm speaking to people in this room that are not critical. I know. (laughs) Okay, sarcastic. That was the sarcasm button. Did I need to push that? All right. And so you guys are like, really? You're looking around? I'll, no, you were critical this morning. All right. But, <laughs> but the truth is, is because of you. And then 13, it says, because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God. Men, women, children will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. I want you to write this down. I don't think I wrote it down for you, but if you're on your ears, write this down. Because when you walk in obedience to God, you are not surprised by the miracles of God. When you walk in obedience to God, you're not surprised by the miracles of God. When you walk, God, man, I told you, I'm, I'm doing what you've called me to do. I'm stepping out. I'm doing what you've asked me to do. And now, because I'm doing what you've asked me to do, man, I kind of expect you to show up. I kind of expect some miracles. If I was somewhere just walking down the street, you're like, man, God, that was really cool. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got it. No, when we walk in obedience to God, we're not surprised that when he shows up, And when he does amazing things, I truly believe that as we are the local church, I believe the local church is the hope for the world. I do. As churches gather all over this nation, all over this world, uh, and we take today and we set aside, or whenever we gather in the name of Jesus, we gather as the local church and we're the difference makers. We're the hope for the community. It's the local church. And that's what we are. We're the local church. We're called to reach into this community. We're called to reach around, uh, around this community, around this city, around this state, around this nation, around the world. It's amazing. And so I love those people who serve. And again, I don't have, I, I wrote down some names and I was going through the list. And obviously I couldn't write down everybody's name. 
But I was thinking about this, and just in a moment of thanks, as preparing for this day, I just thought about, God, I'm so thankful for the people that you've placed in my path. I'm so thankful for the people that you've placed in our church. I'm so thankful for a Suzanne King who's willing to take on our worship when we were in a desperate situation, and I reached out and said, man, Suzanne, can you help us with this? And she goes, I'll pray about it. <laughs> And I said, you better pray fast because you're up next Sunday. <laughs> and took on that role and put together a team. And they pray together every morning before they lead worship. They have prayer in this room and they pray for you and they pray for their abilities. It's not God, how help us to perform today so that we can glorify ourselves. It's God, help us to lead a church in worship to the living God. I think about my daughter, Kayla, who right now is with your kids in elementary and the conversations that we have through the week. And I know I can, I can talk about my daughter in an unbiased way. I know I can't, but uh, I'm just saying the willingness to step in. And when we had some shortfalls in our youth, she said, Dad, can I do this? I feel like I can do this. I mean, I played all your stupid games when you were a youth pastor. I think I can do that as well. And she does. <laughs> they made Thanksgiving pizza on Wednesday night and ate it. And so I think about, you know, and it's just, again, it's going above and beyond. I think about Aaron Washburn, who's right now down with our little kids, with those little uh, up to the two, threes, and four years olds, and sometimes the five-year-olds, and on a weekend, week basis, and she has people around her that volunteer and work with her on a regular basis. They put a team together. You know why? It's not for their glory. It's the glory, the glory of God. It's to see people become fully devoted followers of Christ. I think about Dara Arnold. Dara, you know, she came to me and she says, Pastor, you know what? I want to set a room upstairs that we can set aside to pray before services. Do you mind if I do that? And I said, well, Dara, we don't believe in prayer in our church. And I don't think that would be a good thing for you to do. But you know what? <laughs> we'll try it. No, I said, absolutely. And then she came and she goes, you know what, Marty? It's really hard to pray up there. Can we, can we take a room in the back of the auditorium and just have prayer at 930? So at 930 on Sunday mornings, 930 this morning, Dara was back in the room. And I'm not trying to give her glory. Please hear this. This isn't about uh, any of these people that I'm telling you because I know I'm going to leave people off. So please don't get upset with me. But it's a willingness to step in and serve. I think about Shanna Ray. Shanna came to me. Uh, she goes, hey, I hear you need help with administration. I said, really? Who told you? She goes, well, I haven't gotten an email from you in about six weeks, and I don't know why my name's on that list. I need to help you make sure the right people are in the right place on the right list. And so she's formulated a calendar, and she comes in to this facility on a couple of times a week, purely volunteering to kind of help me keep my act together. Does it always work? And she's like, no, that can't, that's impossible. <laughs> but thankful. Her husband, Brian Ray, was out yesterday. Brian was out mowing the yard. And again, it's because of you we're able to do what we do. And it's the faithfulness of you that make it happen. I think about week in and week out that those that step in our foyer and they welcome people into this facility. For Randy and Angie, always smiling. For Beverly that's back there smiling as people walk in. Sometimes we have days that we don't feel like smiling. I know that never happens to you. But I guarantee you, it's like, hey, there's a smile on our face. And we tell our team, you know what? Uh, we don't point, we take. And so when new people come in and like, hey, where, where, do I, where can I take my kids? I, I don't know where to put them. And so instead of just like sitting behind a desk or whatever, scratching our head, looking at our YouTube video, it's over there. It's like, no, you know what? Let me take you where they are. How old are your kids? By the way, my name is so-and-so, and we're so glad that you're here. That's what our hospitality team does. Put together coffee. I pick up donuts, by the way, so I get credit for the donuts. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that for, you know, I'm on a diet and you're bringing me donuts. I see how it is. Again, we can be critical, right? But I'm so thankful for the people that God has placed in this facility. I believe, the, I believe when they say, they said, you know what? The gifts that you need are in the house. In other words, what we have to function as the body of Christ is represented in this room. And some of you need to step up. I'm just going to call you out. <laughs> Because you have gifts and you have talents and you have abilities. And you're sitting back watching everybody else just do their thing. And you're like, man, this is kind of cool. You know what you are? You're a spiritual consumer. <laughs> and we want spiritual contributors. I don't want to be on the sideline. I want to be in the game. 
I want to be able to help make those things happen. I think about every month with Lewis as he leads our men. I think about, uh, 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 again, Suzanne as she works with our ladies. I think about those that help us that bring food on Wednesday nights. Thank you very much. (laughs) Whoever brings pasta every stinking week, I'm just saying. But it's because of you we're able to do those things. And I realize, please, don't be upset if I left your name off because we have incredible people and incredible teams that work on a, on a regular basis. I call Brent two or three times a week, uh, you know, and just say, Brent, man, I don't know what to do in this situation. And he goes, well, when this happened to me when I was pastoring, this is what I did. And I go, that's a really good idea. Or that's a horrible idea. I mean, it's just it's a two-way street. <laughs> that's right. But we're here to work with each other and build each other up. And it's time for you to get in the game. We have holes every Sunday that several different people fill several different holes because other people, I believe it's in the house. And I believe some of you are sitting here today that you have gifts and talents. And God may be speaking to your heart. You know what? Maybe I need to step up. I can smile. I can shake hands as people come in. I can hand out donuts. I mean, I can do those things. Welcome to Walmart. I'm just saying, I mean, we can do those things. (laughs) <laughs> but it's in the house. Man, I play an instrument. I sing. We want you to be able to, I mean, we all can sing, right? You know, the Bible said, make a joyful noise, not a beautiful noise, but we want, you know, I'm going to get myself in trouble. <laughs> Again, and not only are we involved in this church or this uh, facility, we're involved in reaching into our, uh, our missions. We work with Helping Hands for Jesus, our local food bank. And some of you designate funds for them, and we take the, that money to them so that we can support. We collect bags and food for them here, and we want to be a support to that team. Convoy of Hope, disaster relief from the hurricanes in Florida. We sent money to Convoy of Hope. We are part of the Cleburne Pregnancy Center as they uh, uh, did the Walk for Life because we believe in life. And so we want to be involved. We're involved in TCU Chi Alpha, uh, which is a ministry to college kids. And we support a missionary, Andrew and Alicia Youngblood, who are missionaries on that campus. And on a regular basis, my friend Adam just spoke in their group this last week. And he said, man, they're doing an amazing job on the TCU campus. You know, I know it's Texas Christian University, but you know what? There's not a lot of Christ on that campus. And they're there shining the light of Jesus, and we support them on a regular basis. Adam and Alicia Fogelman, you can go look at our wall out there. They're getting ready to head to Namibia. And, uh, uh, you know, to go into Namibia, they have to start a business. They can't go in as missionaries. They have to start a business. And so Adam is looking at starting a coffee business so that he can go in there and preach the gospel to a, uh, a, a nation that has very few churches or missionaries. We support Jimmy Abrams. Again, we go back to Tanzania and Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and pastor a church called The Ocean, which is a multicultural church. And so we support these people because of you. We're able to do those things on a regular basis. And so I don't want to take all my time talking about all those things. But again, you need to understand of who we are, and we're able to do what we do because of you. And for that, I am truly thankful. You'll hear me say it all the time, and I know Brent challenged us on this not too long ago when we say we will do anything short of sin to reach people for Jesus because to reach people that nobody's reaching, we have to be willing to do what nobody else is doing. And so I really hope that you will get ideas that, hey, how can we be better about ministering in our community? Man, our men stood out in front of Chevron uh, not too long ago and handed out free hot dogs. I think it was on Easter. We're like, man, we're going to go stand out here. We're going to give away hot dogs. And I was out there with them, and people tried to pay us, and we're like, uh, no, we're not taking your money. Okay, we will this time, but I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but we handed out hot dogs. You know, I just think about even some of the things, like I told you, Thanksgiving pizzas, who does that? I, you know, but again, there's a lot more we're challenged because sometimes we think about what we do, and you know what, we need to take it a step further because will we, are we really to do, willing to do things short of sin to reach people for Jesus? Are we willing to step out and reach those that nobody's reaching and be willing to do what nobody else is doing? And I think we do that in some ways, but I think other ways we can do a better job. And I believe you have the gifts. It's in the house. It's in the house. And so, again, there's a lot of people that, that, uh, that they're part of a traditional-minded church, and that's not doing a whole lot. I don't want to be that mindset I want to be. We want to be out in this community. We want to be out in this world, and we want to change people for Christ. Not for Grace Point, not for Marty Douglas, but for our risen Savior, Jesus. 
because he gave his life for us. And that we got to be truly thankful. I want to be in a place where everyone supports the church. <laughs> you know, and again, oh, there you go, Pastor. Absolutely. God has blessed us incredibly. And how can we not be a blessing with how he's blessed us? Malachi says this, bring in the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. The tithe, the mines are one-tenth. Again, back to 2 Corinthians 11, it says, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. It's not about us, people. It's about giving thanks to God. And so we'll lead the way with irrational generosity. We believe it is truly more blessed to give than to receive. Giving is not something we do. Generous is who we are. And then finally, number four, and as our band comes up, as we get ready to wrap up our time today, everyone is changed by the church. Everyone is changed by the church. The early church, they prayed, they fasted, they loved one another, they reached into the community, they did all of those things, and the church changed lives. The church changed lives. And that's what we're called to do as the church, to reach out beyond ourselves and where people are changed because of what we do. Again, it's not about us. It's about pointing to a risen Savior. The early church, they prayed, they fasted, they loved. Acts 2.47, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. It goes on and says there was no need among them. I believe that if the church would step up and be the church, that we wouldn't have need for government programs because the church would step in and be able to do those things. Just saying. That's who we're called to be. We're spiritual contributors, not spiritual consumers. I believe the local church is the hope of the world. And so again, as we look around and we do things, it's about God using us to reach people, a lost and dying world. Regardless of what the news says, regardless of what is happening in our community or around us, God's not surprised by any of it, but he's called us to step up and use our gifts to make a difference. And it's because of you that we do what we do. When you see Jesus as he is, you cannot reject his goodness. You cannot reject his love, his grace, his offer of new life, his forgiveness, his power to transform a life. I'm telling you, there is no mission on earth greater than this. We're to show his love when you see him as he is. It's not a part-time thing. It's not a hobby. It isn't something that we're interested in. It's a divine calling. And you show me something more important than this, and I'll leave it and go do that tomorrow. We're called to make a difference, and it's because of you. There's nothing more important than God's love in his church and through his church for his glory by his son, Jesus. And it's because of you and your faithfulness that I am thankful it's because of you and your grace, your graciousness, and all the things you do, we're able to do what we do. And there's so much more that we can do. And so for some of you, maybe God is speaking and just saying, you know what, it's time I get off the sidelines. It's time I get in the game. It's time maybe I talk to a, one of the team leaders that we have and just say, hey, how can I help you? How can I help you with kids? How can I help you with music? How can I help you with technology, sound, and video? How can I help you as people come into this place? How can I help you in the hospitality room? How can I help you be a part of reaching people for Christ? I want to encourage you, get off the bench and get in the game. And so as we're in an attitude of prayer, maybe you're here today and I've talked about what Christ has done, has done for us by giving his life, that we might have life. And you've heard me talk about a church that wants to be active in changing people and changing their lives for the cause of Christ by, by the love of a heavenly father who sent his son to die for us, that we would have life. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus died for you. He died for your sins. He died for my sins. He came to this earth that we could have life and abundant life. 
It's a free gift. All you have to do is ask and accept his love and his forgiveness and to give your life to him. And so if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've never given my heart to Christ, but today I want to, I want to serve the one who gave it all for me. And so if that's you today, whether you're watching online or you're in this room and you would say to me today, I want to give my heart to Jesus. If that's you, would you just simply raise your hand and let me pray with you? Thank you. Thank you. Church, would you just pray this prayer with me? Nobody prays alone. Just simply repeat after me. Just simply say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son to die for me. Today I give you my life. No longer to live for myself but to live for you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I just encourage you, as you go through this week, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, what are you thankful for? Be thankful for what God has done in your life and what he's done for you and to show that to those around you. I want to encourage you to have an incredible week. I want to say happy Thanksgiving. And I hope that you get time to spend with your families and time to eat a lot of food and time to watch the Cowboys win today. And I'm just kidding. (laughs) That's a controversial statement. Some of you aren't thankful. I see how it is. But I want to encourage you to have an amazing week and truly reflect on the things that you're thankful for. Thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for worshiping. And I'm so thankful for you because it truly is because of you we're able to do what we do. Thanks for being at Grace Point Church this morning, because at Grace Point Church, we want you to experience a place that you belong. Why? Because we're so much better together. We'll see you next Sunday. Same place, same time.